Faces are the fingerprints of today, thanks to facial recognition technology. Some use it to unlock their phones, convenient. For others, it's used to surveil their every step. What is face recognition capable of and how can you escape it? Our topic today on SHIFT. Sixty-four countries around the world use facial recognition technology. The hardware and software is often produced in China. Low-income countries can even get reduced interest on their Chinese loans. That's what the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace found out. Not much is known about the global industry for facial recognition technology. They act discreetly, even if some well-known tech companies are amongst them. In the Russian capital Moscow, facial recognition technology has been recently implemented too. The first stress test, the corona pandemic. More than 100,000 facial recognition cameras are being used to fight the spread of coronavirus in Moscow. The cameras were allegedly monitoring Chinese people in a targeted manner. And they've later been used to track whether people in quarantine were really staying at home. Activists see facial recognition and geo-tracking as a threat to human rights. Some measures can be justified, but it's up to us to make sure that after the epidemic ends, these measures are lifted. Within weeks, software companies around the world adapted their systems to the new reality under coronavirus measures. Facial recognition now also works with face masks. When people don't wear a mask, the recognition rate is about 99.5%. When wearing a mask, the recognition rate can still reach about 95 percent. If the camera is connected to a temperature sensor, it can even measure a person's body temperature and inform the authorities if someone has a fever. In order to recognize humans wearing masks, the systems need to practice using photos. Companies have repeatedly used photos from social media for this. So-called scraper software automatically downloads all photos that have not been set to private. The New York Times revealed that the U.S. company Clearview collected, brace yourselves, three billion photos of Twitter, Facebook and co. The resulting database is used by U.S. police forces to convict criminals. But how does facial recognition technology actually work? Here are the basics in 50 seconds. Most facial recognition systems use a 2D source like a photo or video. An algorithm analyzes the relative position, distance and location of facial features such as the eyes, nose and mouth. Alternatively, the algorithm analyzes multiple images of a specific person and generates a data version of the face for comparison. 3D facial recognition technology uses sensors to capture information about the shape of a face, like the exact depth of someone's eye sockets. Texture analysis uses details of the skin, such as unique lines, patterns, and spots to identify a face. How secure is facial recognition technology and how far could it potentially reach? We asked Mia Chang from Taiwan. She's a data scientist and expert for machine learning. The more personal data that you get, this database is more valuable for the hackers. So uh, you could think of like, once you add the face image to your data set, then it's kind of like everyone wants to hack it in it, because once they have your face, they could kind of pretend they are you. Maybe you will use 18, uh, 34, I don't know, 87 different points on your face. So let's say if you cover your nose and your mouth, you kind of cover the certain numbers of the data point of it. So then the rest of the number that you could use would be the data point from your eyebrows, from your eyes, the distance between your two eyes and your cheekbone, etc. So still you could get certain of the feature of it, but you would take a bit longer time to compare of it. Even some people will wear a t-shirt with a human face in the front so that uh, the camera is kind of confused whether this t-shirt is you or this face is real you.
there are some flaws in the model in between. So I think we definitely need to think about when we talk about the promising, we also have to think about the penalty. What if we do the things wrong? There's a experiment or a survey from a research center. They use uh, 500 people's face of American Congress and then they compared it with the, the criminal data set. And then they found it is kind of like a 35 case of it are matched with the criminal data, but they are not. In Germany, we usually discuss data security and privacy when we talk about facial recognition. That's justified. But do we also see the positive side? In India, this technology has reunited thousands of missing children with their families. And in China, too, many people rather see the pros than the cons. When Meng Jin Yang goes to eat lunch at High School 11 in Hangzhou, all she needs to show is her face, and she receives her pre-ordered pork with egg and vegetables. She no longer needs to queue to pay. It's way nicer than it used to be. We'd always queue for ages because everyone paid by card. Students can also borrow books from the library in this way. The data we collect tells us exactly who has borrowed which books and when. This helps the library to cater to the students' interest when buying new books. Meng Jingyang has gotten used to the cameras. On the one hand, you do sort of get the feeling you're being watched. But on the other hand, it does help us learn. And that's the main reason we're here. Overall, the pros outweigh the cons. Screens are used to display when the boarding school students are in their rooms on time in the evenings. They also show who's late to class in the mornings. Modern technology is supposed to help the students excel, says the school. The more data, the better. In San Francisco, things are very different. There, facial recognition was officially prohibited for use by the city's authorities. In 2019, Aaron Paskin was the initiator of the bill. It's psychologically unhealthy when people know they're being watched in every aspect of the public realm, uh, on the streets, in parks. Um, that's not the kind of city I want to live in. One reason for the ban on this technology? Fear of racial profiling. Indeed, facial recognition systems make more mistakes with Asian and black persons as well as with women, children and elderly people. A study by the MIT named Gender Shades shows that the algorithms work especially bad on black women. In response to this study, IBM brought out a new data set called Diversity in Faces. It consists of Creative Commons photos of one million people of different skin colors and can be used to train data by the global research community. In mid-June, companies like IBM, Amazon and Microsoft officially declared that they would not supply face recognition technology to the police anymore. But nowadays, software developers are not only working on artificial intelligence to recognize our faces, but also the mood we're in. Human emotions are complex as is expressing them using the face. Scientists at the German Fraunhofer Institute for Integrated Circuits train algorithms to recognize emotional patterns in human faces. But do universal expressions even exist for emotions like anger, grief and fear? Different aspects of the face express emotions. Certain muscle movements create a look of joy, anger, grief, and so on. That's universally understood in most cultures. And the things we can discern from the facial expressions of another human are things that we can also teach software with a very high success rate. To train the software, the researchers also use photos of faces with clearly defined expressions. Their system for analyzing emotions can detect anger, joy, rage and grief in real time. But what can it be used for? A typical thing that emotion AI is used for is interactions between humans and machines. One of our projects is teaching a robot to work with autistic children to help them read nonverbal signals and facial expressions. That was angry. Well done, you did that well. The technology is also used in the automotive industry. Here it's primarily used to monitor the driver's emotional state, spotting signs of distraction or stress. So is emotion AI harmless? 
These kinds of technologies have the potential to be used to monitor and manipulate people, of course. That's precisely why it's important to actively engage with this technology and its potential consequences. We can only do that if we're in control and really understand these technologies and what they can and cannot do. It's becoming increasingly harder to escape facial recognition. But one can still try to trick the algorithms. Some creative ideas on how to do this have been developed in art and design. This coat by German label IP Privacy is not just a fashion statement. It's also an invisibility cloak. The pattern's supposed to confuse facial recognition cameras. When the camera scans it, it recognizes this is a face, and this is a face. It also recognizes your own face, but that's not too much of a problem. It's like you're telling the algorithm that you're a human, but you have 10 different faces. It doesn't make sense to the algorithm at all. And so it messes with the deep learning processes behind the algorithms. Georgina Rowlands and Anna Hart from the British art collective Dazzle Club also want to be undetectable to cameras. They paint their faces in different patterns called CV Dazzle. Created by artist and researcher Adam Harvey, these shapes are supposed to trick facial recognition algorithms. They use smartphones to see if it works. So I can see that it, I'm hidden, it's not detecting me, so the, the shapes have worked. Every month, the collective organizes a silent march through London. The British capital has one of the highest concentrations of surveillance cameras worldwide. The artists paint their faces to protest the lack of transparency behind the collection of biometric data. It's deeply ironic. You make yourself very visible to be invisible, so we talk about hiding in plain sight. Artist Leo Selvaggio has uploaded his face online, allowing anyone to download it. His You Are Me masks can be used to hide your own identity and confuse the surveillance system. What's your opinion on facial recognition? Would you put your face on the line in return for more comfort? Join the discussion on YouTube or Facebook. See you soon. Bye.